News out today that a French company has pled guilty and paid more than three quarters of a billion dollars in fines, resolving a U.S. federal criminal charge that the company made payments to ISIS and another terrorist group to keep a cement plant operating in Syria. That was in 2013 and 2014, as ISIS was kidnapping and killing Westerners. The company, Lafarge, paid more than $10 million to the terrorist groups. Our Eamon Javers is here with Deputy U.S. Attorney General Lisa Monaco on the news. Eamon. Sarah, How that's on right. earth so, does this happen? So good to see you. And Lisa Monaco, thank you so much for joining us. And Thanks for having me. Sarah's question is a, a great one. How on earth does this happen? Well, what we've seen today is the first time ever that a corporation has pled guilty, has been charged with and pled guilty to providing material support to terrorism, the most notorious, one of the most brutal and notorious uh, terrorist groups this world has so ever they seen. they just cash checks to ISIS they're in paying, order to be able to do business in Syria? They're paying ISIS uh, for protection and for muscle, but also to undercut their competitors, to get a business advantage. They were making a business decision, but it was not a decision that was theirs to make. It is against the law to pay money to a designated foreign terrorist organization, that's ISIS here. And this was happening all the time in 2014, the summer of 2014, at the same time that ISIS was brutalizing the Syrian people and killing, murdering innocent civilians, innocent Americans, journalists, aid workers. So this is a truly horrific case. And what we've seen here is, frankly, a cautionary tale to companies, multinational companies, doing business as they are every day in this uh, very complex world today in high-risk environments. And boards and CEOs need to be very vigilant about their companies operating I mean, there. This was personal to you, though, because at, during these years, or some of these years, you were running Homeland Security for the United States. Did you have any idea that a French company was paying ISIS at the same time you and the rest of the U.S. intelligence community were trying to put a stop to them? No, we, did, we didn't, Amen. And this was, as I said, in the summer of 2014. ISIS is marauding across Iraq and Syria, waging a horrible, brutal uh, engage in a civil war in Syria uh, and undertaking the most brutal acts of terrorism, both in the Syrian people and against Americans, innocent Americans they would kidnapped and murdered. Do you think global corporations are making the same type of decisions now? I mean, we've got Ukraine, you've got all sorts of conflict zones around the world. Are companies deciding on a business basis to be in business with terrorists now? Look, this is what we want. Uh, boards and CEOs and general counsels to take away from this case today, which is that now more than ever, companies are operating in high-risk environments all around the globe. Boards and CEOs and general counsels need to be hyper-vigilant about those operations. They need to be really paying close attention to doing deals with companies, with other companies operating in those environments. They need to be doing due diligence. They need to be investing in compliance structures so they can detect this type of activity and report it to the government. Now, the initial reason we had scheduled for you to be here at the NYSE today was to talk about cryptocurrency, because we've got a big documentary on this fascinating couple that you arrested and charged earlier this year with money laundering more than $3 billion in allegedly stolen Bitcoin, uh, Heather Morgan and Ilya Dutch Liechtenstein. Uh, you seized more than $3 billion worth of currency earlier this year. Uh, can you tell us what's going to happen to that currency at this point? Are you any further down the process of deciding who's going to get all those billions? Of dollars. Well, this was the largest financial seizure ever uh, that happened, as you as you noted at the time, and the largest seizure of, of cryptocurrency. That case is very much ongoing. That investigation and case is ongoing. And victims, individuals and entities whose money, who claim that that's their money, that they were victimized by this uh, money laundering scheme, will submit claims ultimately to a court who will decide uh, how that money is dispersed. So somebody's going to get those crypto billions, but we just don't know who yet. That's exactly right. Lisa Monaco, thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate your time.